The 1999 season. That's how long it's been since the Nashville Nightmare or the Music City Miracle, depending on your perspective, I guess, if you're a Titan fan or if you're a Buffalo Bills fan. That was the last season that the Buffalo Bills made the playoffs, the 1999 season. To put that a little bit into perspective, I had just graduated high school in June of 1999. Bill Clinton was still president of the United States. Just think about that for a second. That's how long it's been. The past 14 seasons with zero playoff appearances for the Buffalo Bills. So I know the Bills organization, as well as their fan base, are itching for the chance just to get back really to respectability, to get out of that cycle of mediocrity and really, you know, establish that, hey, they could be a legit franchise once again in the National Football League. This is an organization that once dominated the AFC in the early 90s, making it to four straight Super Bowls. Four of them, of course, in Bills fashion, won zero of them, but made it to four straight Super Bowls. Now it's been 14 seasons since they last made it to the playoffs back during the Clinton administration. So now last year in the 2013 NFL Draft, new head coach Doug Marone, the front office of the Buffalo Bills, kind of made their statement, made their stand, and they said E.J. Manuel was their guy, and he was going to be the franchise quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. He's the one that's going to have to shoulder the burden, shoulder the load, and become the guy that helps take the Buffalo Bills back to not necessarily the promised land, but just respectability, back to the playoffs, if nothing else. So you had to know heading into the 2014 NFL Draft that the Buffalo Bills were going to devote a good portion of the draft, especially early on, to trying to give E.J. Manuel more help, giving him more support on the offensive side of the ball. Now, was that going to come from offensive line help, wide receiver help, tight end help? That was kind of unknown where they were going to go and when, but you knew they were going to go there at some point in time during the draft because you have to. You ultimately hitched your wagon to the E.J. Manuel star. you got to do everything you can to help him, give him every opportunity you possibly can to succeed. If you don't, as a Buffalo Bills organization, you're going to suffer through several more seasons of mediocrity and a couple of years have to try and find your next heir apparent, your next franchise quarterback, because E.J. Manuel will not have gotten the job done. So now here with the 2014 NFL Draft, you have the recent passing of their owner, potentially a sale of the franchise later on in the year. You know, now is the time for the Buffalo Bills organization maybe to perhaps be a little aggressive and really make a stand and try to impress some people and say, hey, we could be legit and we're a young, exciting football team and one that you want to hit your wagon to if you're potentially looking at owning the franchise. And from a general manager and head coaching standpoint, you want to kind of make a stand, make a statement and say, you know what? You don't want to get rid of us when you come in. You want to keep us because we've got something going on good here in Buffalo with this Bills organization. So with their first pick in the 2014 NFL Draft, they actually decided to get really aggressive and trade up. They moved from number nine to number four, and that wasn't really particularly a surprise to me. I, you had heard rumors for a few months that the Buffalo Bills were looking at potentially trading up as high as number one or number two, somewhere in the top five. And maybe the Buffalo Bills were positioned in a way where they had no choice. Maybe they had to do this. They had to be aggressive, and they had to make a big stand. So they moved up from number nine to where Cleveland was picking at number four and ensured that they got their guy, perhaps the best wide receiver prospect in this draft, an elite talent in this draft, that's Sammy Watkins out of Clemson. Now the price for some organizations may have been prohibitive. Apparently it wasn't for the Buffalo Bills. They really didn't do any damage to this year's draft. I found it very interesting, though, that they basically, in a lot of ways, threw a good portion of next year's draft under the bus to move up that five sl slots, excuse me, from number nine to number four, giving up a 2015 first and fourth round selection. That is a big price to pay to move up just nine slots in the draft. But when you get a guy that could come in and really be an explosive playmaker in your offense, help support your young quarterback that you have in place in E.J. Manuel. Sometimes you got to roll the dice and you got to get aggressive. 
and I will at least say from the Bills' standpoint, they wanted to be very in on this year's draft, and next year's draft maybe not so much. Maybe they felt, and maybe wisely so, that this year's draft class was going to be more talented than next year. So if they were going to get aggressive with the class, this was maybe the year to do so. And they followed that back up in round number two. I talked about they were going to look at wide receiver, tight end, offensive line in some configuration, in some order, at some point in time in the draft. They turn around in round two and get Cyrus Quanjo, the offensive tackle from Alabama. Now you can sit there and bring him in. Maybe initially you play him on the right side at tackle on the other side of Cordy Glenn with your left tackle. Maybe at some point in time you feel he could potentially take over for a Cordy Glenn and you could flip Cordy Glenn to right tackle or to left guard. But a guy like Quanjo, who at one point in time was being viewed as a can't-miss lock, stock, and barrel first-round pick, yes, with some of the knee injuries, yes, with the piss-poor play, frankly, in the bowl game against Oklahoma, he drops to the Bills here kind of in the middle portion around number two, and it was another roll of the dice. And you see that throughout this draft, especially with these first two picks for the Bills, a big-time roll of the dice. In terms of the draft results, I think their best pick is Sammy Watkins. you got a guy who's a top-five player in this draft. You moved up five slots to get him. You gave up a big price, but you didn't give up too much. You know, if Sammy Watkins becomes a Pro Bowl caliber wide receiver and he becomes a big time difference maker and a playmaker for EJ Manuel in that Bills offense, moving up five spots, giving up a first round pick and fourth round pick in 2015 might have seemed like a bit of a bargain for the Bills organization, a bit of a steal. And maybe long term, the Buffalo Bills fan base is going to look at this pick and say, God, I'm so glad they made this trade. I'm so glad they were aggressive. In terms of the best value, I look at Cyrus Quanjo from Alabama. You know, if it wasn't for the questions about the knee injury and everything else, this is a first-round pick. To be able to get him in the middle of round number two represents pretty good value. And again, another need position, but not reaching to fill a need. This is a guy that you could legitimately argue belonged at this point in time in the draft. Like I said, again, a bit of a value here. And get a guy who I still think can play left tackle at the NFL level. But worst case scenario, you got a guy that could be a fixture at right tackle, like his old Alabama teammate DJ Fluker, who had a great rookie season for the Chargers in 2013. You've got a guy that could play right tackle. Maybe someday you'd even entertain Fluker flipping him inside to guard, but maybe someday he could become the left tackle to future that blindside protector for E.J. Manuel for several years. I look at picks that could surprise. I look at a guy like Preston Brown, the inside linebacker from Louisville. Some people might sit there and say, well, you've already got Kiko Alonso. You brought in Brandon Spikes. Where's a guy like Preston Brown going to play? He's a guy, the more I watched at Louisville, when I'm sitting there watching their defense for guys like Marcus Smith and Calvin Pryor, I my eyes kept more and more going to Preston Brown, and I looked at him, and I saw a three-down linebacker inside in the 3-4 or 4-3 defense. And he's a guy that potentially by year number two could be a starter inside and be a damn good one on the opposite side of Kiko Alonso in the middle of that Bills defense. I also liked, in terms of another guy that could surprise, I look at Russ, Ross Cockrell, the corner from Duke. This was a guy that seemed to make plays all over the place, just seemed to have a good nose for the football. A solid, heady player. Maybe not the fastest, maybe not the quickest, but a guy that I think could play and, again, be a nice role player in that Bills defense. The thing I would second guess maybe is the fact that they gave up so much to move up to get Sammy Watkins. You went from number nine to number four, only five spots, and you gave up a first-round pick in next year's draft and a fourth-round pick in next year's draft. Would it have maybe been better from a Buffalo Bills standpoint to get it all out of the way this year? and maybe give up a second and a fourth rounder this year and maybe like a third rounder next year, perhaps. Did they really necessarily need to make the move from nine to four? Because you could sit there and talk about Sammy Watkins, but how much better was Sammy Watkins really than Odell Beckham Jr. out of LSU? Made it have been wiser for the Bills to sit put at number nine and just take Odell Beckham Jr. or maybe take a tight end like Eric Ebron on a UNC, a position that they had a big need at, you know, somebody other than just Scott Chandler, and they didn't address it all in this entire draft. I'm just wondering if they just had to, had to, had to go up and get Sammy Watkins. I wonder. And I also wonder maybe if they would have been better off moving just up to number seven, trying to do that and maybe getting their hands on a guy like Mike Evans. Maybe he would have been a better fit in Buffalo in that Bills offense for E.J. Manuel and head coach Doug Marone. That's, that, that's going to be the big story of this. When you talk about the final analysis of the Bills draft, I feel like Watkins is an elite talent. But was he worth the price? Was it really worth moving up five picks again? Was there that much of a difference between him and a lot of other players? Was there that much of a difference between him and Mike Evans and Odell Beckham Jr. 
the top three wide receivers in this class, between number one and number three, was there that much of a difference to justify giving up a first round and fourth round pick in next year's draft? Mm. I will say I thought they got some decent mid-round value. Cyrus Quanjo in the second round I thought was a bit of a value, a bit of a steal. Preston Brown, I don't have much of a problem with them taking him in round number three. Again, I thought a good value. Ross Cockrell, the corner from Duke, fourth round pick, good value. Cyril Richardson, the guard from Baylor, decent value in round number five. Even taking a gamble on a guy like Seantrell Henderson from Miami. This is a guy with first-round talent, an undrafted free agent maturity and focus. If you can get this guy into an NFL program and you can get him to focus and be committed to work and hone his skills and his craft, this could be one of those really late steals. The 2015 draft, though, is going to tell a big part of the picture for this year's draft. Where are the Bills going to finish in the 2014 season? Meaning, what pick did they give to the Cleveland Browns in the first round and the fourth round? You're also talking about a team that on the surface, they traded away Stevie Johnson to get a fourth and maybe a conditional third round pick in 2015. I'm not so sure why they traded for Bryce Brown. Um, that was a little bit of a question to me. But when you look at the Bills' 2014 draft, there are some things to like and some things that are concerning or a bit of a question. Overall, I gave them a grade of a C. You know, you could almost argue with this team it's an incomplete maybe because the 2015 draft is going to determine so much of the grade of this year's draft, frankly. I really believe that. So for the Buffalo Bills and their fans, do I think that 2014 will bring you a trip to the playoffs for the first time in 15 seasons? Mm.